live. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to another wide, wide live stream. I, I say weird things when I'm looking at the computer and reading things. <laughs> so we have Master uh, Gecko Four in the chat. Hello. Hey, dysfunctional wombat, and uh, I lost my window here on my screen. Hold on. Don't you hate that? when you have multiple screens here and you get yourself discombobulated. Hold on, I think I put it in a space or something weird. <laughs> oh boy, well we're off to a good start already, don't you think? Because, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, let's go mission control. There we go, I found my window. All right, let's drag that over here. So I do not lose that. Okay, sweet. So how are you guys doing tonight? Everyone doing okay? I know we, we last saw each other very recently, but mess, message redacted. Uh-oh. That's uh, a... We're, we're off to a good start here. Okay, so uh, today um, I'm going to be looking at some things that are on this table here. Uh, finally, hours you can manage. Sorry, I don't know where you're located, but uh, maybe we could have more streams like this. Yeah, sorry that some of them are late, but um, yeah, so today uh, we're going to be looking at a few things that are on this table here, and uh, some of them are in various conditions here. Uh, <laughs> yes, so um, spoiler alert, these we're not going to be able to test, and we'll get to that in a second. Um, so first off, uh, you know, yes, we have a few items on the table, so let me go through what these are here. Um, so we have an iMac G4. Uh, this is our early 15-inch model. Uh, we have a blue and white G3, or what's left of it. And we have a Quicksilver G4 right behind it. Now, these are practically just cases. And I'll get to what I mean about that in a second. Um, so I was on Facebook Market... market blah, 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 blah. I was on Facebook Marketplace, as sometimes I go to take a look at, see what's out there. And uh, someone had um, a listing of this motherboard, just the motherboard for this computer. And I thought, well, that's kind of strange. Just the motherboard. But they had a power supply for it as well. And they had um, the CD drive for it. And I thought, hmm. <laughs> and I thought, hmm, this is, uh, this is peculiar. So I messaged the guy. Hello, Ancient Mac. I like your username. Um, <laughs> I don't think I stole your machine, Ryan. Hey, Jay. So I messaged the guy because I saw the board for this G3 Blue and White posted. And I said, hey, you know, I see you have a motherboard here. I'm sort of curious, like, why just the board? Do you have any other parts? And his story was that uh, him and a friend of his were going to um, take apart this tower and this G4 tower. And they were going to take out all the insides. And they were going to put a PC inside. And I'm like, all right, you own it. You can do whatever the heck you want with it. But I kind of try to pers persuade him not to do that because a PC in this case, if you don't measure it just right, the PCI cards and the video cards aren't going to align and ever align correctly and everything like that. And it's just going to be a pain in the butt. So I tried to warn the guy. I'm like, you're kind of going down a path that I wouldn't do. And I've seen a lot of people try and do that. But good luck anyway. So I bought the board off of him. In fact, that board is, again, I keep hitting this camera, sorry. Uh, that board is, uh, where did I put that board? I just brought it down here before the stream started. Huh. That's curious. Uh, oh, here it is, right next to me. I didn't even see it. So here's the board. Uh, so this is a G3 blue and white board. It actually had the graphics card too. I just uh, took that off. Um, but yeah, it's a fully populated board. We have at least uh, 512 megabytes of memory here. Um, we have the processor, we have um, the firewire ports and everything. Um, and yeah, so we have all, all the, the connectors here and uh, with the graphics card and uh, of course one of these lovely, whoops, I just dropped it. Ah, it's okay to drop this, it's garbage. One of these lovely Maxell batteries here. So I promptly ripped that out of the board because ticking time bomb. Exactly. So I was looking at this and I thought, huh. This is an interesting board. There's the ADB port. And then I put this aside. And a few days later, 
I picked up the board again, and I'm like, oh, I wonder why the AD port, DB port is on this dongle. And I'm like, wait a second. That's not an ADB port. <laughs> this is a serial port. And so this is actually uh, an add-on product by Griffin Technologies uh, where you can add a serial port in, replace, in replacing of the modem here. So the modem would go into this little slot here. And uh, what they've done is they created this little device here. And I'm going to pull this up. And so you just remove it from this little socket. That's the socket where, where the modem would have gone. And you have this little modem here and so this the serial port rather and so this is a g port uh serial 3005 revision a copyright 1999 griffin technology um so this is a, a, a you know a, a full serial port here um, i'm gonna assume it could do local talk i don't know but we're gonna play around with this not on this stream but sometime soon because i have to obviously put this board in the machine and get it working again but i'll get to that um but yeah i mean this this looks like it's everything that's um that's uh would work for any uh c um i'm mixing up my words for any uh local talk or apple talk thing so it, it should in theory be fine you know uh there might be some drivers for it or something i have to find or maybe it'll just work on its own but i thought that was an excellent little addition uh to this board because i was not expecting uh anything besides a standard blue and white board um so this was an excellent find i didn't even notice it in the picture um so yeah, now the whole reason I got this is because I have a second blue and white that's just sitting over here. And let me, let me actually pick that up because I want to show you. Ah. So this is a, a heavier machine because everything is inside of it. Ah. And you can see this one has a zip drive built in. And you can see your own reflection. How about that? So this machine has a label on it. Ah, this label is at the top of this machine. This is a machine I bought years and years and years and years ago. So in 2017, when I started this channel, ah, I was going through my machines and I looked at this one and I thought, huh, what's wrong with this one? Why does it have a big X on it? Because I put a, a, a little label on it with an X. So this machine always had some trouble whenever I booted into an operating system. It was always a bit wonky. Um, it always kept freezing randomly. And so I'm like, what, what could be the problem here? Did somebody overclock it or something like that? So I was like, okay, that's a little strange. Um, also I got this machine dirt cheap. This is the first G3 tower, the blue and white tower I ever got. I think I paid five or $10 for it back in like 2007. Like it was ridiculously cheap. Maybe it was like 20 bucks or something like that, but it was very, very affordable. And, but I always had problems with it. So I'm like, what the heck is going on here? So after talking to uh, Greg Rucke from the Mac Yak team and a few other guys in our group, um, we determined that this is one of the early blue and white G3 revisions that has a bug uh, in the ATA controller, the IDE controller on the motherboard. And that bug is related to how many drives you could actually power uh, or drive in an in a IDE chain and if you get over a certain, um, use a certain type of a hard drive, or if you try and daisy chain it, you know, with your CD drive or something in a weird way, uh, it could cause data corruption issues. And uh, later versions of Mac OS X tried to compensate for this in a weird way. And I'm doing a video about this, so I'm not going to go in detail about it. But essentially, that was the problem I was having all along, that this machine using the ATA bus for a hard drive would screw up. Some of the uh, ways around this was to use the slower uh, CD-ROM drive bus or use a SCSI card and just put a SCSI hard drive in it. So Apple actually included a lot of SCSI cards in there. Um, and yeah, so this, this machine is pretty interesting. Uh, this one does uh, not have a, a modem built in, but I think I have one that does have a modem built in. Ugh. I'm just looking at the comments here. Um, yeah, so Big X is never good. Yep, that's a good comment. <laughs> um, Dysfunctional Wombat wants to start saving up for a digital audio G4. Got to find one with the modem, since it's the one I've seen for sale. doesn't usually have them. Okay. A modem would be interesting. Uh, yes, I do have a beige G3. Uh, I do have the beige G3 mini tower. So that's the huge one that looks like a 9600. Uh, I don't have any of the desktop ones, just the, uh, just the G3 mini tower. Yeah, I have a lot of Power Macs. Not everything. I don't have an all-in-one. I don't have a Mac Portable. I don't have a 20th anniversary Macintosh. 
Uh, I don't have a 4400. Um, I don't have some of the quadras like the 700 or the uh, you know the big tower ones. Um, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. So so the the way to get around this bug on this ATA board uh, is to use SCSI or an IDE controller to get away from using the chip that's built onto that board. So the whole purpose I bought this newer board here is was hoping for the nominal price that I paid for it that I could just swap this board in here and I'd replace it. Um, and it turns out this is a revision two or a later revision, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it uses a different uh, ATA controller right here. So that Ultra ATA chip on the board here uh, is a newer one. So this does not have that problem. Um, so this board, uh, let me look on Facebook. Let me see what I paid for it. I have to, I have to remember because I, I kept making deals with this guy, so it's it's hard for me to remember off the top of my head. Let's see. Okay, so I paid thirty dollars for this board, just for the the G three, uh, blue and white board. Uh, so thirty dollars, I didn't think that was bad. He um, originally had it for sale. For a hundred dollars for this, um, here I'll, I'll hide that. But he originally had it for sale for a hundred dollars and the CD drive and all these accessories and stuff like that. So um, that's what I paid for just the board. I got him down to thirty because he wasn't selling it, and uh, we got to talking, and he's like, "I just want it gone." So that was a considerable downgrade on the price. But um, he also gave to me a DVD drive with just somewhere and the graphics card. So I thought, okay, that's pretty good. So. Um, he was supposed to, remember, take everything out of this case and his, his friend and him were going to put uh, PC tower components into these two towers, okay? So, yeah, it was a pretty good deal, I thought. I saw, you know, yeah, just the power supply. He gave me the power supply for it. So I thought, actually, he gave me two of these power supplies. One is, uh, I believe, for this one. One, I believe, is for this one. But we'll get to the G4 in a second. So a few days go by, um, and yesterday I saw um, he had um messaged me and i i usually am pretty good at messages but i i must have missed this one and he messaged me about this macbook and he said i'm selling this for 30 dollars comes with the power cord are you interested i said not really um to be honest i have a stack of macbooks um and then he said well you know let me know if you want the rest of the the g3 and i'm like what do you mean and so I looked, because he didn't respond right away, I looked at his seller profile on Facebook and I saw that he had posted this and pictures of this. Now, the picture of this actually had the motherboard in it, but the picture of this was just the empty case. So I'm like, oh, he, he abandoned the project. He wants to get rid of these things. So I asked him, how much do you want for the MacBook and the cases? I said, you know, might as well take the MacBook if you know, you're having trouble selling it. Um, if not, hang on to it, try and find a, a buyer. And uh, he said, how about uh, we do $50 for uh, the towers and the MacBook? And I said, oh, okay, that's not a, too bad of a deal, I don't think. Uh, I thought this G4 came with a motherboard and a power supply and all the accessories and stuff. And I thought for the MacBook with the charger, eh, that's not a bad price. So I, I, in my mind, I was thinking, all right, 20 bucks for this, 30 bucks for the tower stuff. Not too bad. Um, so the MacBook is actually a, a pretty recent one. It's a, I think, an early 2009 one. I think one of the last um, uh, polycarbonate ones uh, before they went to the unibody ones. Uh, and he had a picture of it working. The only cosmetic damage I could see is very common on these is a little chip in the plastic here. But uh, I'm actually going to be working on fixing a MacBook for my father. Um, so I thought, you know what, doesn't hurt to have some spare parts here. Um, so I actually have, I'm looking at the shelf over there, I have three white MacBooks, two black MacBooks, and then I have some others in parts. So I have uh, quite a variety of these in case I ever have to do anything. But uh, yeah, all right, let's read the comments. Sorry about this, guys. Uh, you just talk so much, I have to follow up. <laughs> uh, power supply is worth more than the board, probably. Wow, $90 for a PSU, oof. Uh, working on setting up an in-house ISP, so more modems are the better. PC setup, multiple modems, so the only thing I really need is a power, oh, okay. So um, a, a little tip for you, Dysfunctional Wombat. I don't know if you're using the same method I was using. Uh, I tried to set up like a home dial-up server for the longest time, and it did not want to work. 
Uh, and I, I actually just went and um, did some research, and I found that that Dream Pi thing about the Sega Dreamcast and the Raspberry Pi and a USB modem and getting that to work, that worked perfect for me. I, as long as you find a right USB modem. I did a video on this. If you if you haven't seen it, look at my channel. Um, I was able to get a, an old iBook to dial up to it without a problem. So I, I think that was a good, a pretty good way to go for dial-up internet, like a dial-up internet server using Wi-Fi or Ethernet. Um, but you, know, you may have a better method, but just a heads up, because I was looking into that for a while. Um, I have a 2007 MacBook. It has a noisy fan. There's probably something stuck in it. Show us the shelf. I did film a tour um, that is uh, on Patreon. Well, actually, no, it's not on Patreon right now. Uh, I have to re-export it because I screwed up the audio a little bit. Um, but yeah, I do have two parts of a tour that are on there. It's a messy tour, but it's a tour. Um, <laughs> even the b boring stuff in the background. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so I got, I got the, the MacBook and I got, um, uh, it's all right, buddy. <laughs> it, I, I'm eventually going to do a cut down tour. The only reason I sort of was forced to do the tour is I had a Patreon tier, which Greg Rutke was very kind to oblige the, that, uh, that tier, uh, to push me over the edge. And I promised I would do a tour when I hit that tier. So I recorded a brief tour. Um, I'm going to record more for the Patreon people. So there's going to be more of a tour there. Um, but it's an absolute mess in this basement, as you can see. Uh, my goal is to put more shelves here, just like I have on the other side of the basement, and organize things. And then I'll do another tour publicly. So, um, Dysfunctional Wombat says, I've been thinking of scrapping my OG Xbox for its hard drive to put in my iMac. Don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but only through... Those hard drives are pretty nasty, the Xbox ones. I think they're about 8 gigabytes, unless you put a newer one in there. You could find tons of them on eBay pretty darn cheap. I would I would leave the Xbox hard drive alone, um, especially because they probably use the cheapest components they could to build that thing. Um, and you could probably just get, uh, like, um, even if you don't want to go for a hard drive, uh, I bought one for like 9 or $10. They're the little ATA or IDE to compact flash or SD card adapters. They work pretty well. And, yeah, so Ryan's suggesting that in the chat as well. Um, <laughs> so a college budget may be able to afford you if you skip a beer or a pizza or two uh one of those cheapo ide to compact flash card adapters or sd card adapters is probably better uh because you know more those sd cards are cheaper um and more more plentiful uh you could just get one of those for like eight or nine dollars off ebay or amazon and then get an sd card for probably like five bucks not even um I would, I would prefer that, especially if you're going to put it in an iMac G3, because the iMac G3s get hot, and any heat generated by that hard drive is probably not the best, especially because those, those CRTs are aging and everything. So I think the, the IDE to uh, SD card adapter is a great solution for an iMac G3. I'll probably mess around with that myself. That's a good idea. Uh, see if, see if uh, what model works, what's compatible. I bought one a while back for a project, and I just never ended up using it for that particular purpose. Okay, so uh, Windows XP supports dialing in. I've done it in the past. Works fine. Plus, I have a set of three modems that's three concurrent connections. Okay, pretty good. <laughs> that's a good. That's a good setup. All right. So uh, yeah, the the original Xbox has serial number locked hard drive. So once you really take it out and mess with it, I don't know. Anyway, um, so I got this MacBook. Um, when he gave me these towers, I was kind of disappointed because it turns out this Quicksilver tower is empty. And when I asked, hey, where's the board? The board was in the picture. That's kind of why I wanted these. He said, oh, I'm sorry. When we were taking out the board, it cracked. So I don't know what they were doing, but they managed to crack a small portion of the board off. And I said, well, did you save it? And he said, no. So they tossed out the board, which had the power, which had the uh, CPU and had a graphics card and like two PCI cards on there. So that either USB board or whatever. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's. It was disappointing because, like, that was the whole reason. The picture shows this tower and that with the board. And I thought, hey, you know, that's a pretty good deal because I could use another Quicksilver board with an extra processor. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it, that was frustrating. But you know what? It happens. But when I went to pick, when I went to, uh, before I went to pick those up, uh, he talked to me about this iMac. He said, look, I found this iMac in storage. I don't know if it works. Hey, Bruce, welcome to the party. Um, so we're just going over some things I picked up recently. And so the guy talked to me about this iMac. He said, I don't have the power cord for it. I can't turn it on. Um, I don't have any of the accessories for it. It has a scratch on the screen here. There's a pretty sizable scratch here. Um, 
And uh, he said, you know, are you interested in it? I see them going for about $60 online with the keyboard, with the mouse. Make me an offer. And I said, I, I'd really probably not want to spend more than 20 or $30 on it. Um, especially because of the scratch there. So um, when I got it, I actually opened this up already. I had to tinker around to fix something. Um, and I think it's it was worth the $20 in the condition that it's in. Because uh, at first when I got it, the screen wouldn't turn on. I had to unplug it. I had to reseat things. Now it's fine. But, yeah, anyway. Um, so, yeah, so about, you know, 20 bucks for this. So it got a little expensive because this guy kept finding stuff. Um, and I jokingly said with him, well, the, the $10 you gave me off the iMac, I'll probably buy something else from you in the future. So, uh, so yeah. Um, with uh, everything here, the only thing I can really show off working uh, is the iMac. I haven't turned on the, the, the MacBook here. Um, I was going to use this cord, and I'm unwrapping the cord, and I'm like, this is in pretty good condition. This is a pretty new cord. And you notice there's no Apple logo on this cord. So this is just a knockoff third-party adapter. Probably not going to really test if it works. Um, I have a, a regular MacBook charger around here somewhere. So, yeah. Bought a, no, I didn't buy a car from anybody. <laughs> <laughs> so uh first we're gonna look at the imac here and uh, then we'll look at the macbooks i think the imac's really cool uh and want to play around do some tests with it here so let's move some of these things out of the way oh not that i bought them but i found these and bruce probably knows exactly why i'm holding these up and what these are good for <laughs> and no they're not drums uh they're not drumsticks uh these are huge uh extensions for a screwdriver and the whole idea before, uh, you know, for, for me wanting to get these, and I picked these up uh, maybe last year or something like that, um, essentially I could plug them into a regular screwdriver, put a Torx screw end on the back of it, and exactly, Bruce got it right, to open the case of a classic Macintosh. Um, as I was opening that Mac Classic, which you guys saw me struggle with uh, a few weeks ago, um, I had to use a flathead screwdriver because I was the only one that was long enough and I it was just happened to be just fit in the screw hole and I was able to turn it. Um, these are good. Uh, I did buy one of these that was a little shorter than this uh, that was advertised as being perfect for a Macintosh Classic. Uh, it ended up like shipping to my brother's house and then he gave it to me and I don't know where I put it. So I picked these up for like a dollar or two each. Very, very, very handy to use. So I picked up two knowing I'd probably lose one. <laughs> Uh, yes, this is not the period keyboard or Mac. I thought I had uh, the keyboards on the shelf over here, but the keyboards I have are actually Bluetooth keyboards, so I'm not going to bother setting that up. This is why I had lying around, because I have the iMac right here, so I just stole the keyboard and the mouse from the iMac, and uh, we're just going to be using what we're using today. Um, I have uh, a mouse for it somewhere. Um, there's a, a white Pro mouse I have somewhere, but it's actually pretty beat up, so I'm just going to... Yeah, actually, I have one right here. This is... Uh, Let's see, we have, yeah, these are just, you know, the black pro mice. These are not the ones that came with it. Um, this is interesting. This is a clear cable. This is a white cable. So this is actually a later one. But, uh, yeah, I, mean, I guess I could use one of these instead of the puck mouse. But I think I'd be offending Jay if I unplug the puck mouse. So we're going to leave that plugged in there. <laughs> okay, so dysfunctional wombat. Um, about that voodoo card. I'll talk to you a little bit later. <laughs> we have some cool things to show off coming in a few weeks, I think. So, um, let's see. That's alright. See you later, Master Gecko 4. Alright, Dysfunctional Wabba says he has 2.16 gigahertz white MacBook. And <laughs> you had a knockoff MagSafe that killed it. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, so, all right, let's uh, turn this iMac on. Maybe we'll replace the, the keyboard and stuff. Uh, my camera is sort of, like, off balance here. Not off balance, but it's, like, not straight. But, yeah, there, that's a little better. So, okay, so we're going to um, plug this guy in. Uh, I'm going to move this MacBook on top of here. And uh, let's see you guys get a good shot of that. At least we're not going to deal with any refresh rate issues. I'm going to actually bring this a little closer because who cares about looking at my big head? Let's look at this iMac here. Okay. So, let's turn this on. Oh, that's right. You can't use the, the keyboard, but... Heh. I have to use the one in the back. 
The speaker sounds like it's rotting or it's a little blown out, um, which is a little concerning, but I have the pro speakers I could plug them into. In fact, I have a set right around here somewhere. So there we go. The screen works. Uh, it does have a pretty nasty, nasty, pretty, pretty nasty. Uh, it has a pretty nasty scratch on the front there, um, which is probably not going to be visible on the camera. Well, it's right here. You can probably see it a little bit. It's pretty nasty. It's not the the smallest scratch, unfortunately. Uh, but considering my other iMac G4 has a broken screen, uh, I'll take a scratch over a broken screen any day. Um, it is sagging a little bit. Um, and actually now it's being a little better. But yeah, so... Yeah, and this, uh, this tripod is a bit... Uh, let's just tilt it this way so it doesn't look as bad. We're going to be we're going to be at an angle anyway, so whatever. Okay, so sorry, just catch up with the comments here. Okay, yeah. So if I go uh to here, let's go to about this Mac and let's see the details of this iMac here. Uh I usually get stuck with like the low-end base models with no memory and everything. So uh if I look at uh at this machine here, I'm going to sneak and go to um, and go to Mac Tracker here just to see exactly um, what this uh, what models were available at the time of purchase for this one. Uh, so this is a 15-inch one. So this was the first IMAX. They, they didn't come out with the larger screen until a little later. Um, and this is uh, the model identifier is actually Power Mac 4 comma 2, which is funny. Uh, so this is a January 2002 model, and uh, this sold in either a 700 megahertz or a 700 megahertz with a CD drive. Uh, so I'm sorry, the 700 megahertz model had a CD burner. Uh, then the one model up from that, the middle model, had a CD burner DVD reader, and then this is the 800 megahertz model, which I think has a DVD burner in it, which is pretty cool. So um, this this is pretty neat because I usually get stuck with the low end models, so that's nice. Uh, so this is an 800 megahertz G4, as we said. The system bus I'm reading is 100 megahertz. Uh, it has either a 40 or a 60 gigabyte hard drive. Let's see how big this one is. Uh, this is actually a 60 gigabyte. Okay, cool. Um, it's shipped with uh, Mac OS 9 and Mac OS 10.1. This currently has Tiger. So, yep, 10.4.1. And I'm actually going to see if 9 was ever installed on here. I'm just curious. So let's go to startup disk. And see if it lists that OS 9 folder. Uh, not finding anything. Just the network startup here. It looks like this machine was actually wiped clean. Because there's like no files, no extra programs or anything. Um, if we open up the hard drive and go to applications... I don't really see anything, so they might have just erased the machine when they had it last. It does have a copy of iLife on here, which is not part of the retail install, so that's nice. Um, let's see, anything else? So the maximum amount of memory is a gigabyte. Unfortunately, on this machine, we only have 256 megabytes installed. Um, so the extra memory slot, which is actually on the bottom of this machine, um, is empty. Uh, thankfully, the one on the bottom is empty, so if I open the bottom, I could put a RAM, uh, a piece of memory in there. Um, opening these things up is kind of a pain, but uh, this actually does have an airport card, so it does have an 802.11b airport card. Uh, it's not going to be able to connect to any of my networks at the time, um, but yeah. So this 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 does have um, this one of the similar G4 uh, video cards that I have in my Power Mac, uh, the Nvidia GeForce 2 MX with 32 megabytes of memory. Um, so that's pretty decent here. And, um, yeah. So, I mean, this is a pretty capable little machine here. Um, has, you know, just standard USB ports. You have your FireWire 400 ports. Uh, it does have a mini VGA out, so I can display, uh, something output on there. Um, yeah. So this, uh, this was actually shipped with 10.1. So this shipped with the first version of Mac OS X when this model was released. Uh, later on, they, they sold it with different versions, but this this originally came uh, with 10.1. So yeah, but this is Tiger. This is Tiger. The version on here is is 10.4 Tiger. 
So just catching up here. Uh, da, 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 da. Does it have Bluetooth? Uh, no, it does not. So if I go to Bluetooth, it says no information found. I don't think that was actually available on these models until the later version. I don't even think it was like an add-on option. Uh, if I look here uh, and I go to the model next that came after it, uh, Bluetooth was still not a model on the 17-inch one. Um, let's see. And Bluetooth was not an option on the 2003 15-inch model either. And Bluetooth became optional uh, on the 17-inch 1 gigahertz model. So that was the first iMac with Bluetooth, was the 17-inch 1 gigahertz model, uh, which came out in February of 2003. So quite um, quite a departure there, because this, this came out uh, in 2002. So the year after this, they have Bluetooth, but not this one here. Uh, this can run 10.4, the... If you have one that's a little faster, I mean, look, you could install Leopard on here. Uh, the graphics is not 100% uh, supported. I actually installed Leopard on my older one, and uh, I ran into a graphics issue where if you put the machine to sleep and then you wake it up, it's a white screen, and it doesn't let you do anything. Apparently, there was an update for Leopard that fixed something else that fixed that graphics issue. You do have to trick it to install it because the installer CD won't let you install, the installer DVD, rather, uh, won't let you install it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it can run it. You just probably, I, I wouldn't recommend it. I mean, Leopard is kind of slow on the minimum spec machines and I just, just, just find Tiger very zippy. So unless you really need a Leopard for something, uh, I usually stick to Tiger, but that's just me personally. Okay. So yeah, this machine's pretty stock here. Um, I'm going to, uh, plug in, uh, ethernet here because we did... We have an Ethernet cord all the way for the Performa, so we have one here. Uh, so I'm not going to use Bluetooth. It does have a modem built in. These ports are awfully dusty. Hold on. I am not plugging anything in there until we clean out those ports. Oh, my goodness. Uh, let's get some more dusted air here. Sorry you're seeing my, my shirt here. But... Yeah, that is, uh, that is pretty bad. Let me... Uh, I have to get one of those little... Uh, Q-tip things, because <laughs> this is pretty nasty, pretty nasty. Okay, let's try and clean that out a little bit. Okay, let's move over here. And I'm not going to be able to, well, I guess maybe I can. Let me move this over here. And the screen sort of sags a little bit, but so here we have the back of the iMac. If you've never seen the back of an iMac, it's actually pretty dusty. Uh, yeah, you just see the junk that's coming out of this iMac here. Ugh. They said this wasn't a storage bin, but there's quite a lot of dirt and dust outside of this, all around the ports and everything. <sighs> Ugh. Yeah, so. Yeah, this is going to need a good cleaning. But, yeah, it didn't have the power cord. I had to use the aftermarket one I had, unfortunately. But I do have one of the original power cords somewhere. All right, so we have our Ethernet plugged in. Turn around our little iMac here. Let's put the camera back up. Oops. As I kick the camera. Very professional, of course. <sighs> okay. So, yeah. Let's move this back up here. Yeah, that was a problem with uh, the Apple keyboards. They're USB 1 devices. So, uh, when they had USB 3 ports eventually added to them, you were out of luck because you only had two of them because you'd probably use one of those ports for your keyboard or mouse unless you had the Bluetooth option you were using a Bluetooth keyboard. So, All right, so let's take a look here. We are connected to the Internet now, <laughs> and uh, this thing is probably not going to be happy. In fact, let's go to the Internet uh, settings here. 
We only have 256 megabytes of memory, which isn't too bad on Tiger, but would be unheard of for Leopard. So it might have just auto-configured itself. Looks like it actually did because it's, it's loading the Apple website. Yep, Ethernet's connected. Oh, yeah, that's a... Uh... <laughs> we have a very fast connection, but uh, this machine, uh, this version of Safari, I don't think is very happy. Well, while this loads, if you feel like liking the video, uh, if you, I assume most of you are subscribed to the channel already, but if you feel like liking the video, that's appreciated. If you want to subscribe to the channel, if you've already done so, obviously that's awesome. But yeah. Okay, yeah, so we have uh, a partial Apple website with uh, iPhone 11 imagery here. Um, okay, yeah, so not, not exactly, um, yeah. Yeah, so we're, we're going to load up my favorite website, Mac84.net, because that's my own website. Ha, ha, ha. And this loads pretty quickly. So we have our either retro site or the modern site. The modern site I have not updated in a while. But if I had to go to the retro site here, it's actually loaded quicker on my Performa. I don't know. This machine is just, <laughs> this is just bogged down. It doesn't have a lot of memory. Let's, uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, oh, it's indexing the hard drive. That's what it's doing. Yeah, we're. Let's turn that off. <laughs> There's nothing on here to index. Let's go to Spotlight here, and we're basically going to drag the computer to privacy because uh, that's one of the quickest ways to turn this off here. There. So we stopped indexing our our hard drive there. Uh, actually, let me bring up the Finder again. I always like putting the Applications folder in the dock here, so I'm going to put that there. And uh, put the Utilities folder in here, too, because I want to load up Activity Monitor and uh, see, see how much memory we're using and such. My website is Mac84.net. Very simple. Uh, there's a quite a few things on this website uh, that is actually very useful for old Macs. And this is the whole reason I made it. Uh, at the very bottom, there's some random downloads. This is just a collection of my personal downloads and files I put on here. Um, a lot of this contains stuff like old versions of QuickTime, uh, Apple Disks and stuff. Some stuff does not work. Some of this stuff I maybe uploaded and I forgot that I didn't put it in a SIT file or a, or a bin or anything. So they're, they're, they strip the resource fork and it doesn't work. But basically anything I put on here, I'm using when I'm doing one of my videos. So if I click on LaserDisc here, you'll see that I have this Visual Almanac disc image and this Getting Across disc image. That's LaserDisc communication software for my LaserDisc player. Uh, so that's something I'm messing around with. Uh, I do have some browser stuff here. So here's Clasilla, uh, iCab, Mozilla, um, some drivers here. So for mice, there's like the Logitech mice. Uh, and then for the Sonnet G3 upgrade cards, just some anything that I have trouble finding. Maybe it's even on Macintosh Garden, but, you know, some of the stuff here that I just need to access quick on a small page like this that I know will even load on my slowest of machines, even a Mac Classic or something could load up this web page fine. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's that's what I, that I have this website for. There's also some other great links on here. Macintosh Gardens here. System 7 Today was a great site. Uh, MacRumors.com. I always grew up using them. 68K, Macintosh Liberation Army Forms. Uh, the Vintage Apple subreddit. Uh, MacFixer. Uh, has a great selection of old Apple software. Um, but that website's not really, uh, you know, they have a lot of nine stuff. I, I don't think anything newer, uh, older than that. Uh, Apple Fool's a great networking website. So, yeah, it's just, it's just basically like... Um, a bunch of stuff here. Uh, I think that's just the refresh rate here because the, the light is solid. I think it's just the, the way the camera is is uh, going out there. But uh, I will have to put Bruce's website uh, on here. But the thing is, it's not going to be on this section of the page. This section of the page, although it has some stuff that's like the, the Apple subreddit, maybe you wouldn't load that up on here. Uh, what I have to do is I have to update my modern site here. Because if I go to that modern site, it's going to probably struggle to load it. I can't identify the server, blah, blah, blah. Um, this is just a WordPress site, and this is where... Uh, it's not doing too bad of a job. Uh, this is where I, I kind of post my latest videos. Now, you can see this is the latest video I have here is not even loading up the preview, but this 
is the iMac video I did last year. Uh, and I have links to my social media and stuff. But yeah, I'll probably put a link to Mac Yak and Bruce's channel and uh, his Recap of Mac website on here. Um, but this retro site is mainly made for retro stuff. And I do have red asterisks next to stuff that will not load on a modern Mac. So that's kind of what this page is meant for. Just trying to keep it lightweight. But yeah, definitely go to, to Bruce's website, recapamac.com.au, I believe. Maybe I got that messed up. Hold on, let's see. Well, I can type today. Wow, I cannot type today. I've been typing all day. Too much typing. Bruce is going to get a ping from an old G4 iMac. He's like, what the heck is going on? Ah, there you go. So Bruce just put in the chat. And hey, look. <laughs> that loads up pretty well, Bruce. I would expect nothing less. Let's go to uh, oh, the Macintosh Classic. That's a good one. Your site is very responsive, Bruce. Especially on version 3.04 of Safari. I am extremely impressed. Oh, looks like this got a little squished there, but you can just download the PDF. So, very cool. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I was I was thinking about before because um, you know Tiger and Leopard they're very similar, but Leopard it just seems to be a hog on some things. <laughs> just pure luck. <laughs> All right, so we know this is connected to the network. Um, let's see if it finds any of the other Macs I have on the network. Really? Maybe Apple Talk or not Apple Talk, but maybe. Uh, well, actually, yeah, I want to see if uh, some of my old uh, my old machines will show up on here. It should. Uh, so file sharing is not turned on. Let's change this because I own it now. Steve's. Let's say Stevens. iMac. G4. We'll say this is the 800 megahertz model because yes, I will have other iMac G4s on the network. <laughs> uh, oh, let's turn on a uh, remote desktop too because uh, I like being able to control my Macs remotely. Okay, cool. And uh, let's go network here. Apple Talk, make Apple Talk active, yes. That's what we want. All right. All right. So let's go back to our network here. And it's swirling. Servers. Huh? What the heck? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so I found my time capsule. Found the Mac Mini G4. Found uh, another Mac Mini. Uh, found my Dell laser printer. Uh, found my network attached storage unit. Yeah, so good. It's on the network. Looks fine. Um, yeah, there's another little scratch on here. I'm noticing more imperfections on this display, but, you know, it's, it's not too bad. Yes, I did turn on Apple Talk. That's why I did. Because I have a, a G4 over there, which is actually asleep right now. So I'm going to wake that up, and we'll see that appear on the network. So while that wakes up, that should detect itself on the network. We should be able to connect to it. So yeah, we have our Wi-Fi here. I'm going to just leave that off. And uh, let's see. All right, that G4 looks like it's woken up here. Sorry I woke you up, buddy. Um, and uh, let's just wait for this to refresh here. So there's my own iMac. Yeah, sometimes this takes forever to refresh. Sometimes. But yeah, have any of you, I mean, I, I see a few of the comments that you have, um, you have uh, G, you have uh, iMac G4s also. Uh, just curious, anybody who has one of these? Or do you have a later model? Let's see, reading, does the G4 have file sharing on? Yes, it does have the TCP IP file sharing. I usually turn that on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have an old airport base station that um, 
that I usually plug in when I want web access. I also have an old Netgear one I could use too. I'm actually just going to log in, log out. That should sort of force this to look for it because that, that G4 is on the network. Oh, the iMac G3s are fun. Yeah, I had to reset all the passwords on, on the accounts here because I wasn't able to get into the machine. Oh, Drews, I'm getting a lot of dropped frames on the stream. So I apologize if something's going wonky with my internet. Hopefully it's uh, not having too much of an effect on that. Yeah, sorry. It looks like... Oop. I may be offline. I'm getting a red, a red light here. Sorry for the connectivity. Uh, hold, please. Okay, uh, it looks like we're back in the green. I don't know what happened there. Let me know if, uh, if the stream has, uh, has gone back to the way it should be. <laughs> maybe, it was, maybe it was turning the uh, G4 on the network that screwed everything up. Holy crap, look at all these software updates we just got. <laughs> maybe that was some... Uh, yeah, that was weird. My uh, OBS went down to like 200 kilobytes per second. And uh, YouTube was yelling at me and everything, so... And it's doing it again. I really don't know what's going on, because everything on my network is usually pretty stable. So, hopefully this doesn't... Oh, boy. Well, I, I've been streaming for almost an hour, so we're going to go to an hour, and then I, I have to actually stop, because I have to film something today. Um, so we'll play around for the next 15 minutes. Hopefully this stream will cooperate. So we have a, a ton of software updates here. Uh, Java, iWeb, iPhoto, iMovie, iDVD. Uh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna do the Safari update, cause I could leave the rest of those, but let's update our Safari a little bit. I'm really surprised that, um, these updates are still, whoop, these updates are still online. I mean... I hope they, they don't remove them, but I wouldn't be surprised if Apple just pulls a plug on that server one of these days. Ah, uh, yes. I regret getting rid of my, some of my old machines, too. I'm very happy I, I grabbed on to what I grabbed on, because for a while there, I was really considering, oh, I don't need a spare Macintosh LC2, I don't need this, I don't need that, and I was just, I was literally looking at some of the prices they were going for on eBay, and I'm like, you know what? What am I, when am I going to use this machine again? I was very close to doing that like a few months before I started this YouTube channel. And I'm like, you know what? Let me hang on to them. And it was also like the winter, so I was like procrastinating. And I held on to them. And I'm glad I did because um, they're just going up in value for whatever reason. I, really, some of these machines that people say are very expensive and collectible, I don't have a fondness for. Like, I, I just, just me. You know, just I have no nostalgic connection to some of these machines like a g5 i thought they were cool when they came out i never owned one at the time so i never really had a, a connection to it uh and then i got one recently and they're pretty neat but i have one and a half working ones out of like five that i have or three or four or however many i have um so i mean the other machines are pretty much part machines i got for free um yeah so i'm not gonna not gonna not accept it <laughs> Uh, all right, so we're, we're just uh, restarting the iMac here. Let's just let that boot up. I mean, I think the iMacs are still pretty good computers today. Um... You have the iMac Pro, which is a an interesting device that, you know, it's uh, a souped-up iMac, uh, which is nice. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's, a, it's interesting how they evolved from the G3 iMac to the G4 iMac to now uh, basically all the iMacs are the same, you know, with the, just the LCD screen and all the components on the back of it. 
All right, just waiting to get in to OS 10 here. I'm gonna have to turn off this login window because uh, it's just me here. <laughs> I don't need I don't need to be super secure or anything like that. I just noticed this is a this is a very early revision uh, Bondi Blue um, mouse here because it does not have the indent for the button there. It's just smooth plastic. Whereas I think I actually have one over here. Let me go grab it. Yeah, so this is a this is a later this is actually a blueberry mouse here, very subtle difference in the color, but this has um, oh, there we go. This is just for Jay here. This has the indent here, and this does not. So both the exact same model number. One has a little blue on the back. One has uh, less blue on there. But interesting. Oh, that's where that went. I was looking for that. So last night during the stream, I was looking for this floppy disk drive, and I found it. It was just hidden. So that's gonna plug that in. Why not? All right. So let's look back at our Macintosh here. And so we're all booted up. Okay, and I still don't see that G4 on the network. Oh wait, there it is. Right here, Power Mac G4 AGP. G4 AGP right now. So let's log into that. Yeah, so I, I knew the G4. Yep, there it is. And here's our hard drives and everything. I knew the G4 had has had the uh, Apple Talk and everything connected. I think it was just the iMac that wasn't seeing it. But yeah, I could connect to the G4. Let's open up the picture from the desktop. Some folders. Yep. Works great. Cool. Sweet. So let's see what version of Safari it updated to. Because we had, I think it was 3.04 before. Or something like that. Let's see what version we have now. Oh, 4.13. Okay. So it's actually <laughs> very, I closed that window. It's, it's beach ball now. Uh, let's go. Ooh, it's slow. It is slow. Um... Wow, this is a uh, this is <laughs> this is hanging here. I think because it's trying to load Apple.com, which I should not set as the homepage here. Ooh, yeah, that was pretty bad. Cannot establish a secure connection. Yeah, well, let's go to let's go back to Bruce's website here. Uh, <laughs> it, it's trying. <laughs> I'm going to open up Activity Monitor here. Because, uh, maybe upgrading was a bad decision. <laughs> there it goes. All right, it's loading. Yeah, Safari's using up. 58 megs of RAM and about half the CPU. 68% of the CPU now. All right, let's just do a refresh of the page. Okay, that's not terrible. I think I think it was just uh, obviously this the system needs more RAM, but I also think that maybe the version three of Safari was ignoring more of the CSS and stuff that modern websites use. So, because <laughs> uh, old pages like this still load up relatively quickly. In fact, that loaded up a bit quicker. So, yeah, this only has 256 megabytes of memory. Uh, we have about <laughs> 26 megabytes of memory free. So, yeah, this is, this is obviously a, a bottleneck here. And I'll, I'll have some memory to, uh, what type of memory does this use here? Let's see. SD RAM. Yeah, I think I have some SD RAM I could plug in here. Probably nothing too big. Probably a 256 meg module or something. But that's better than just keeping the standard here. So, yeah. So, this iMac is pretty neat. Um, I still want to try and get a screen to fix the one that I have a broken iMac with. Because um, might as well try and get that fixed up. 
Uh, I will want to install Mac OS 9 on here. I think I have, um, I think I found the CD for that. So I will be doing that. And when I do that, I'll probably do a live stream of that as well, or, or at least the stream will be playing around with it. What I do like about this machine is it does have the video out port, which means uh, when I want to do a stream and use the external video capture of a Macintosh like this, uh, I could use this iMac, which would be great. Um, because with exporting a uh, video signal, sometimes it, it kind of messes up when I'm trying to split it, especially with the scaler and the convoluted setup I have, that it's nice to use a laptop or a machine with a screen built in like this. So thankfully this does have VGA out through that little mini VGA adapter. And I'm looking at my container of parts here. Uh, this is what that, nope, that's the wrong one here. Um, do I have the cable here? No, it's not here, but I have one of those mini VGA out adapters. Uh, and that'll, that'll work fine on this. So yeah, that's, uh, that's what I wanted to show you today. Um, let me just pan around here and show you. Oh wait, there, there's actually a, whoop, sorry. Uh, there's a, a little more I wanted to show you. Um, so these were the two power supplies I got. Um, one's for the G3 uh, blue and white, one's for the Quicksilver. But the guy took most of the panels off of the G3. So I have uh, the back panel here that goes on to the G3. And then I have the uh, front bezel with the zip drive. And thankfully, it looks like... Oh, he included the uh, the bezel and the holder for the Quicksilver here. Uh, and if I can pull it out of the bag here, he included the bezel, uh, the uh, the holder, the, the disk drive, and the zip drive. Now, this is not the original disk drive somebody put in some super right master DVD burner. That's probably not even supported by the operating system. Um, maybe this was when they were trying to build their PC or whatever, but... Yeah, so at least I have another zip drive and some parts and stuff. Always good to have some parts. The bezels are, are very nice, so... Uh, I mean, they're a bit scratched up, but it's always nice to have this set of stuff. So, um, yeah, the PSU for the Quicksilver... Um, I think I looked up the model number of those PSUs. One of them's for the Quicksilver, I believe. Uh, so Master Gecko 4 says, Question, how would I be able to capture VGA output from an iMac G3? That is a very loaded question. Um, you could buy a $300 VGA to USB capture device by StarTech, which is very expensive, um, which handles VGA signals. What I ended up doing is I have a scaler, which they're about $30 or $40 used because they used to be used professionally and nobody really uses them anymore. The trick with VGA is the resolution you're outputting from your iMac is not a TV resolution. 90% of the HDMI capture boxes you find today will not accept any resolution from a computer because it's not a TV signal. It's not 720p. It's not 1080p. If you had a Mac that recognized 1080p or 720p over the VGA signal, that would usually be okay if the refresh rate was compatible with it. That's another thing. Um, I did write a blog post about it. Um, I'll put it in Discord um, because there, there is a, a, a bunch of stuff you have to worry about with that. Um, so the, um, the, the trick that I did and what I do is I take a VGA cable from the Mac, bring it into the scaler. The scaler has VGA input and HDMI output. The scaler actually scales that image correctly, very, very sharp, um, not stretching it or anything. And that HDMI out goes into my Elgato uh, Game Capture 60 or whatever it's called, uh, which will record HDMI uh, from that scaler because it thinks it's 1080p or whatever it is, uh, and then I stream from there. So, scalar power, yes. So, thanks to Jay for that scalar. Um, and so, yeah, that's um, that's my convoluted setup. That's kind of why I don't uh, do that that often, because it is a bit of a pain to set up. I, I have, like, two different devices, and there's a different machine I have to do. So, yeah, so just don't fall into the same trap I did. I did start... I did get a DVI capture device for a PC. That card was about $140. And I kind of regret doing that because it's not compatible with OBS. Um, it's only compatible with OBS if I do like a window capture. And it's very flaky. Um, but if I did have to capture a DVI signal, I guess now I can. And it will support any resolution. So that's the only advantage of that. I don't need the scaler. But 
yeah, but lesson learned on that one. Uh, so yeah, I guess that's going to wrap it up here. I don't really have much else to show, uh, except for this MacBook, I guess I'll try turning it on. I don't know if it has a good battery and I don't want to really risk it plugging into that bad adapter here. Uh, let's shut down this iMac real quick. Yeah, uh, the audio is another thing too. With VGA, you have to capture the audio somehow because audio is not included. Um, so you might just need a, a little stereo headphone jack adapter. Make sure your capture card or whatever device can input that as well. I had a weird VGA to S-Video box I use. Yes, I do have one too, VGA to composite and S-Video. It just, the, the quality is not there. It's a 480i signal that it outputs to as either composite or S-Video and you just use a lot of, lose a lot of image quality there. I will say some Elgato uh, capture boxes will capture 640 by 480, but usually not at the, the refresh rate that some of the old Macintoshes need. So just a, a tidbit there. So I have this MacBook here. I don't know if the battery has any charge in it at all. I don't know if there's a password on this thing, but let's just briefly take a look at this and that'll conclude what we're messing around with today. Cause I have to eat dinner, I'm hungry and I gotta film stuff too. So yeah, again, the only messed up thing here is this little broken piece of plastic, but uh, it's, a lot of them have that. It's not the end of the world. So let's try and turn it on. Well, the power button's a bit sticky. Uh, it does not want to turn on. <laughs> I'm seeing a trend of the things this guy gave me. Um, all right, you know what? Hopefully for a minute this charger won't hurt it. Um, ah, the passwords aren't hard for this thing. Just start up with that Apple setup done trick and you're you're done. All right, let's scoot past here again. Plug in this questionable adapter. And the guy said that this uh, MacBook actually holds a pretty good charge in the battery, so. There we go. All right, so we have a gray screen. I didn't hear a startup chime, but the volume just may, may be muted on this one. Oh, it's recovering from sleep. It has a little sleep bar there. Let me uh, just get past this, sorry. Okay, we have, uh, they put Sierra on this, or Hi Sierra? We have a user, and enter password. Well, yeah, that's going to be annoying. I'll have to start up in, uh, I don't know, look like, looks like, uh, yeah, it was hibernating. Let's, uh, can we even restart? Let me make this brighter. So, the time is wrong, but, uh, let me just... Enter nothing. See if that likes it. Let's try password. Oh. Well, we're getting an alert for Black Friday. So I, I'm getting a, a sense that this thing has not turned on in a long time. Um, let's try one, two, three, four. Any other guesses on the password, folks? Let's try user. Let's try admin. No. Let's try Apple. Yeah, this, I mean, the background looks like uh, Sierra or High Sierra. One, I always get the backgrounds mixed up. Um, password with a capital P. All right, I'll entertain that. Nope. All right, let's, uh, I'm going to have to. See, I don't want to. I don't want to force shut it down because there may be applications running or something like that. Um, but I guess I, I have no choice here because we're sort of stuck in this state here. Password one two three four. Okay, let's try that. Nope. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's 
not even giving me the hint here, so I don't think it's one here. But uh, let's try user with a capital U. I could probably message the guy and ask for the password, to be honest. Um, let's try phone here. Let's see. Let's see. Let me just message the guy. Let's see. Yeah, I, I use um I use um a relatively not complex password on a lot of my vintage machines. Um because it, it's just something that uh, I'm not security conscious with an iMac G3 or a G4 Mac Mini or any of that stuff. Yes, a lot of them are connected to my network, but I have a pretty good firewall that's set up. Uh, I'm not really concerned about people accessing old disk images on a Mac Mini or anything like that. Um, I turn my machines off when they're not being used, so that's not really a concern. I only leave one or two on sometimes. Um, there's some dust on there. Um, so, yeah, that's not really uh, an issue. So the guy saw my message. Let's see if he responds. Because <laughs> uh, I could do the Apple set of done trick, but I'd have to kill it. And i um, kind of curious if anything was left open. Not to be prying or anything, but I also want to give it a graceful shutdown. This thing was on for so long. Um, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I never really set up a password for OS 9 because I find I'm, when I'm using a classic Mac, I'm rebooting a lot. So I don't tend to want to do that because, you know, I'll reboot the machine. I'll go get something. I'll come back and I don't want to log in or anything like that. But that's just me. That's just my thought process. <laughs> I'm not going to put a password on a Macintosh 2 or an iMac G3 or anything like that. But that, that's just me. Uh, if it was a portable, maybe. But uh I believe this is a mid-2009. I want to confirm it. Um, actually, he sent me computers. Try 000. No, I didn't like that. Uh, let's try... Let me try this other one here. Didn't like that. Oh, yep, there we go. So, one of the passwords he gave me worked. Uh, I'm going to turn this away because this is, he had uh, Microsoft Outlook open here. I just want to make sure that nothing was. All right, so here we go. There we are. So we're, we're in, and uh, it does look like this has, let's guess. Yeah, no, it's El Capitan. You were right. Okay, much better. Sorry, just responded to the guy. Okay, cool. So yeah, this is a early 2009, 13-inch uh, polycarbonate one. Um, yeah, the dock's on the side. Um, 2 gigahertz Core 2 Duo, not bad. Uh, there was a 2.4 gigahertz one that was a bit better than this. 2 gigabytes of memory built in, NVIDIA GeForce 9400M with 256 megabytes reserved of the system memory. For the graphics memory so not a bad little machine um let's see how big the hard drive is well, that's weird he he made this large somehow that's usually that's very small how did you do that i don't think i've ever made that that large before maybe it's a view option huh sidebar advanced is this like an accessibility thing that you can make these uh, icons at large? Because I'm not very uh, familiar. Huh. I'm a little uh, curious about that now. I'm going to take a screenshot, actually. <laughs> Want to remember that. I don't think he was blind. He, he drove to meet me, so I hope not. 
Yeah, maybe there's like a display preference or something, but. Let's see, zoom, smooth images, descriptions, captions, display. Yeah, I'm not seeing much else, but yeah, I'll play around with it. There's probably, there might be a preference somewhere. Oh, in general. Okay, let's go there. Let's go to general. Uh, let's see. Appearance blue. Um, highlight color is red. Sidebar. Oh, I actually never knew you could change the sidebar icon size. Whenever they introduced that, I probably was snoozing. I'm going to go actually go change that on uh, my parents' machine. <laughs> That's good to know. You learn something new every day. How about that? Cool. Well, I guess that's going to wrap it up here. Um, this machine still thinks it's 2019, so we're going to have to probably do a restore on this machine because I want to wipe it. I don't want to leave this guy's information on here. Um, so I want to I clear that out. But, yeah, so we, we did play around with a lot of things today. Uh, I am recording a video sometime uh, this evening, um, so I'm going to be focusing on that. But we got to look at some goodies here, so that was fun at least. I hope you guys had fun. Um, yeah, so... Any questions before uh, we end it? We've been going on for about an hour here. And uh, I always appreciate you guys joining me for a stream because it's always fun to not do things alone. I feel like I have a, a nice group of company here. What size is the hard drive? Let's see. That's a good question. Uh, the hard drive is not showing up on the, uh, on the machine here, on the desktop. So let's... It's called Untitled, okay. Uh, it's a 120 gig, okay. And it has a 100 gigs free, so there's not much on it, thankfully. So that's not bad. Um, yeah, so any other questions or anything before I uh, sign off here? I won't be doing a stream tomorrow because Mac Yak is tomorrow. Um, so the Mac Yak podcast is tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern. So come join myself, the Gregs, <laughs> Bruce, Rocky, and Mike and Jay, and um, we, we always have a fun time. Podcast runs about two hours or so, and uh, we talk about Apple news topics and uh, probably the PowerPC challenge and stuff like that. Are you watching for part two of the Macintosh 2 mess? <laughs> wow, a mess. That's what you're calling it. Wow, thank you. Um, I'm going to play around with the Mac 2. I have a lot of memory uh, modules. I want to see if they're compatible. Actually, Bruce, if you're still there, um, it might not be because of the speed of the memory. I'm curious because I have a bunch of memory I can't really test because it has to be installed in certain pairs. But the Macintosh LC has built-in memory. The thought is if I put that memory in the LC, maybe I could boot it up. Or even if I can't boot it, uh, maybe the Apple Tech Step could tell me the size of the memory in that. So that's something I'll have to think about because I want to put more memory in that machine. I've seen some on eBay, but... Uh, before I buy anything, I want to see if uh, I could actually use anything that I already have. So I'll probably do some capping over the weekend, recapping over the weekend, and then playing around memory and stuff like that. Oh, geez. Well, good luck finding your missing CPU card. <laughs> I had one of those somewhere, but I think it was actually for a PowerBook, not a uh, not an iMac. But Okay, so that's about it, guys. I really appreciate you guys checking me out here today. And... Um, be sure to follow me on Twitter or Instagram. The handle is Mac84TV. I usually tweet before I go live because sometimes the YouTube notifications are a little slow. Uh, but I wish you guys a good night. Have uh, a nice day. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow on Mac Yak. And then we'll probably do another stream sometime soon. So take care, guys, as I awkwardly reach across and look at for the end stream button. And wait, Bruce says, if you send me closer pictures of the RAM, I'll definitely check them out for you. A gentleman as always, Bruce. Thank you. <laughs> see you guys later thanks for keeping me company for a while <laughs>